I had four fucking orbs. That was dumb. I was broken. I why they ever thought that and was and nobody challenged it until like a year later. I played it all the time. I wish I did. <clears throat> it's gonna be A, it's always Yeah, it's always fucking A. Unless no 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 maybe 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 no one made all a touch on belt. Play this game, or <laughs> not a big deal. Oh yeah, true, true, true. Oh. Just playing. No, you're too late. Yeah, Pay attention. Nice, good. Is it just me or is it background noise? Oh, yeah, that's in the CS video, I guess. Background music. What? What do you mean? Like CSGO it. is the best game I'm in the fucking planet. I wish. Yeah, it would just be too like abandoned jet dashing in the I bought the Not even, they would just it would just Good. be too like abandoned jet as soon as dashing. I bought the wrong gun, I hope we win. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Belt. I was just getting double ding in two belt, two belt, two belt. Oh my god. Who needs a sheriff when you can buy Marshall? Do you normally play with background music? Oh my god. Wow. Marshall is- Um... What music is playing? Because usually I use like, either lo-fi or like, meditation music. Because it helps me calm down a little bit. Since I, I usually get riled up very easily. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just wondering, because there's like, meditation music in the background. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a little bit distracting for me, but if it works for you, then it's fine. Uh, yeah, I prefer to like anything with the beat because it doesn't mask sound as much. Um, I don't know. Helps me stay positive, I guess, and calm. Thank you. Don't hear beat. Mo most likely mid. Yeah, yeah, through mid, through mid. I think your ang angle is slightly off, but not a big deal. Angle? As I'm the the that boom bot, right? Yeah, the boom bot. You're trying to get into the doorway. Or trying to get to somewhere to where spawn. Yeah. Um. It would be nice to get it into garage, I think. Um. But I don't know, like, I'm pretty bad at using it without, like, a lineup. Yeah. I don't know, if, if you have any tips for that, that would be like, pretty cool too. Just use your minimap. Use your minimap? Yeah, so like, while you're inside the smoke here, mm -hmm. you can like, look at uh, the minimap. I guess it's, you can't really tell. And just kind of ping, I guess? Well, yeah, you can also just look at ping. You can you can look at the minimap, ping, and then look at the uh -huh. ping. That okay. Would, that would be like, like, the guaranteed way. But, not a huge deal. Let me pause here, let me ask you, what are you thinking? Um... I mean, I kind of regret not pushing mid hard, um, but that's in the past right now. I want to get a gun, but I know that the instant I do that, they'll, like, know my position, so... I'm hoping that somebody is staying back or kind of lurking around looking for a kill and I can get one and then get a gun, but if not, I'm just gonna have to try and get one because I don't really see my chances of pushing in and, and actually winning this at all. Okay. Um, at this point, I'm not, I don't think I'm thinking about like getting a gun and saving, which I think would be the smartest decision. Um, but I, I think in retrospect, I should have. Should have what? Should should have just grabbed the gun and then and then saved. Yeah, I think that's probably the easiest option. Just grab the gun, save, and then it makes sense that you're worried about someone hearing the gun, like hearing you uh, pick up the gun or drop your existing gun. But it's not like a huge deal because 
what I probably would do is that I would pick up the gun and then run mm -hmm. to T-spawn instead of staying, yeah. staying around, uh, around screens because that's what they would expect you to be. Yep. And uh, alternatively, you could actually just find some sort of corner and just wait around that corner for judge. Mm -hmm. And like maintain your stuff but just like camp with a judge. And it's slightly higher risk and it's probably going to be harder to do on Icebox because there's not that many good corners to use. Good, like close range corners to use. Probably mm -hmm. the closest thing would just be like um, uh, out, like outside T-spawn if you're like the bottom of belt area. That's probably the only place. And this is assuming that no one is on belt. Right. Um, I'm also, I guess I'm just realizing that if I, I have one satchel, so if I can get myself into like maze, I can take some like decent fights there, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's probably going to be out of the question because maze is like so far away that most mm. likely someone's going to be holding screens, someone's going to be CT, someone's going to be rafters. Yeah, heaven. Yeah. yeah. Before you can mm -hmm. actually get to maze. Makes sense. So I'd say option one, pick up the gun, go T-spawn. Yeah, or option number two, make, keep your judge and then find a corner to play off of. Probably the T-spawn corner, that's the uh, bottom of belt. What would have seen changed the situation or the decision to just grab a gun and say, do you think it would have changed if, say, it was 3v1? Um, not really. So no. the trade-off no. is that getting the gun is safer and mm -hmm. you have instant value that you have a gun, you don't necessarily have to commit too hard for it for exits you can just like get one and be done with it but mm -hmm. if you have a judge then it's higher risk but higher reward the risk being that if nobody goes t-spawn now you save a judge and that's kind of kind of a huge waste but mm -hmm. if they do go t-spawn now you're good for at least one probably two because of your whole you holding a close range corner mm -hmm. gotcha and on top of that you're still you're probably still going to get a gun upgrade or i don't know maybe you die or something but getting two will probably be worth yeah okay. but definitely yeah don't pick screens now for judge Fuck me, I hate and definitely me. definitely don't pick this <laughs> as soon as you pick the gun so you had the originally had the right idea that you're you're wary you're cautious about picking up the gun because it's going to give away your position exactly correct and once the enemy knows your position generally you want to reposition that's why i said mm -hmm. that Better, it's better to pick up the gun and then go T-spawn instead of pick up the gun and go screens. Right. It makes sense. He was in tube and then all of a sudden he jiggle peeked out of this. Like, why? Why? Just so we can win. Just so we can win. I honestly don't... I don't even want to ask. I'm gonna okay. buy a knife skin just so we can win. I don't want to buy the knife, but... Here, just wall me off. He has five essays to write and four exams. Oh, sorry. No, he can just set up a scam. <clears throat> Jeffy. He said today, he said later this week, I said set up a scam sometime. Wait, what? Viper mid, Viper mid. Yeah, this is the risk of peeking from, uh, oh, from Viper walls. From tube. Especially if Sage walls you off and there's no one to help you. Mm -hmm. Do you think I should have just held? And just given, gave info for my team. Because if I stayed alive, I could actually help with help with B. I I can catch one here, like you know, I'll, I can still like take another fight. Viper mid, Viper mid. Mm. If if and most likely nobody even pushes me, and I'll I probably catch one going like under two. What I would say actually in, in this situation is that because you have a sage who look, look, looks like she goes bottom two, well close to bottom two, and you have a solo who's semi mid and mm -hmm. C spawn. Asking your teammates to like bait some attention, like maybe you have your solo say, Hey, so just like peek mid or stomp around mid, and then or sure. maybe drone or dart or whatever, or tell your sage, Hey, peek under the tube, just spam a bunch of bullets, bait some attention, and then you can peek yeah. out, of, out of the tube like very safely or much more safely. That would have been strong, yeah. I think like a sova kind of jump peeking or yeah. doing something would have been really, really strong, yeah. Because if sage did something, it would be. We're just making noise and it'll d direct attention towards the same direction I'm in anyway. But if Sova does something boiler, then I'm probably at least good for good for two. 
Okay. <sighs> but, you know, there's not much you, I mean, it's a, it's all a calculated risk, right? Because you, you took the risk and you just, it just happened to not pay off. Mm-hmm. And there are some options to like mitigate the risk, but then it costs resources, of course, communication, coordination, etc. So mm-hmm. not necessarily a right or wrong answer, but just things to consider. Okay. So there. Me too. I Gone next to me. I have money. Uh, shit, yeah, I don't know. Nothing made. Ole, ole, ole. That's not necessarily an ole, it's only 3A. I also wouldn't boom that. that. Okay, I guess you're boobarning for information. Um, here, so what I'm actually thinking is the, the boom bot just to kind of divert their attention a little bit and possibly make them think like I'm um, flank because I saw the Viper kind of yeah. watching flank a little bit yeah um so I was doing that I had I was thinking either I actually flank which I <clears throat> definitely could have done here or I, I make a little noise and come back but I didn't really think as carefully about do I maybe need the boom bot in this situation? And could it have been useful? I was thinking, hey, like, Sova has drone anyway, it's going to be fine. But I'm yeah. not sure, because especially, I think, when you go higher, there's no reason a raise would actually boom bot if he wanted to flank, right? He would probably just play walking contact. Yeah. I think... So uh, I don't know if that did anything. I have... There's no way for me to know. I mean, really. So it seemed like your original thought was that you were boom botting to to act as a bait, which makes yeah, basically. sense. Yeah, and you decide to go to your team, which makes sense. But I think what I'm trying to point out is that there's better options mm-hmm. than just rotating to your team. If you know mm-hmm. that there are, all the enemies are A, then you can like make use of this map control. Like you have control of B, full control of B, and you have full control of mid, and you could possibly, probably take control of T spawn as well. True. Right, so sure. actually, let's go yeah. to let's go to a map and let's discuss what other options do we have here. We are on icebox, and we were originally base underneath. You can leave two. Looking like this, mm-hmm. right? And then we have four teammates, all on A. And then we spotted roughly three people, at least three plus people, toward A. You know, belt or whatever, outside of A. Mm-hmm. And then we make the decision that uh, we go from linear tube and go screens. That's one option. What other options do we have? Um, I think <clears throat> I can hold and watch mid. Number, okay. That's number two. I can actually push into their spawn and hold closer. Um, mm-hmm. as the exit, I can completely flank, which I can do it quickly or, or slowly. Okay, so which positions are we considering? Where do I draw the X? Um, I don't know. Is there a way to... you have the link for this? I can, like, I guess that, will, that could work, yeah. Alright. <clears throat> Okay, so loading. All right. So I'm gonna be most likely if I was trying to think like I'm I'm gonna go for two kills. I'll probably play like a one and done here, which would allow me to like get all the information here through sound. Okay. Um. I don't know how to erase this. All right, there you go. Um, or I hold. Most likely, they're like if if I hold here, it'll hold like cover these two angles. So that's not the worst thing. Although it'll be the first thing that they're gonna look at, and just they'll have the crosser ready for that naturally. Um, this is all if I'm holding. Um, it can be here. 
I can be I think here for the mid push and also the, the information I think I don't know that's pretty much what I'm thinking if I'm holding those are my options okay you have another option that is going garage here right true and, and that would actually be strong because I can take a peek and actually be able to retreat very very safely yep. um, and with two satchels I think this would be a probably a really risky position because I can't really satchel out. I'll just be completely exposed. Like this would yeah. be decent, and I think this would be really strong as well. Um, something like playing here, I think it'll just that'll just be like very redundant because I can do the achieve the same thing in this position. Um, get info, take a peek, but yeah. I can get it much earlier and also probably like less one and done. Yep. I don't know what the opposite of that word would be, but yeah. Okay. Anything else that you want to mention? Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, if I'm pushing, that I'll probably um go like uh take a passing like here and try to like go up belt that way like i can get as much information as possible and they'd also be as exposed as possible instead of going like this route yep okay and i'd probably check for somebody that's playing <sighs> um like usually like this spot in, in this like little headshot angle um, or like check like this corner before moving into onto this belt position. That's pretty much what I'm thinking. Okay. Okay. So out of these options, which one do you think is the best? I mean, I haven't even thought about this this option. Um, so I think this one looks really strong. Um, and then honestly, like I don't know. I think this one is better for like hearing listening for info early but honestly i would have just flanked i would have just flanked because i had i had two satchels to reposition after getting kills i had like a raised roomba as well that if i didn't use it early and, and that decision of course would have been made way over here when i was back here anyway um, i would have had the boom bot to either forestall or extra information Okay, so, so you're thinking that I would have actually. Mm -hmm. You think you're just gonna go directly? You flank directly? Yeah, I would have just flanked directly, especially given that they don't really have any like sentinel um, utility for flank. Okay, makes sense. Uh, and because I have my two satchels, once I get like a, what my first kill, I can actually go for even like better surprise satchel into pipes or satchel directly into their corner yeah okay so yeah i would say that yeah directly going straight to the flank is an option but i'd probably say it's like the highest risk option like it's highest probably like risk. the the most solo play now you would probably only do that if you one know for sure that all five people all five enemies are going to commit to a like they're mm. not just gonna like turn around and decide to you always know, it's Yep, it's yep, yep. Go A, it's go B. And then, then you're going to run into five people. And mm -hmm. the second thing is that I would only go with this option if you think that your team is not going to be able to hold A. So if yep. your team is able to hold A, then the enemy team is, is more likely to like suffer some losses and then decide to turn around instead of c continuing to commit to A. Right, right. So it'll all depend on how strong are we here, which <clears> I think... <throat> If, if we have four people here and they haven't really pushed past this kind of area, we're, we're pretty strong. And yeah. also depends on how fast they're playing, which, right. and like based on how they played pre previous rounds and considering that this is like an organized ranked, I'm already thinking they're just full committing, especially if they don't have any, like they showed no presence mid or, or, or towards B at yeah. all. They're just running out. 
but if the moment they slow down or see I see that there's no activity or I see that let's say enemies are getting killed by my allies and we're holding it well I would probably take it slower so in that case I could get maybe like the best of both worlds by maybe like getting up to this point which can let me think okay do I need to flank, which would give me like a closer distance to flank from, or I can easily kind of reposition and stop or hold an angle for information. So if I was like here in this spot, I would have like probably slowly made my way towards here. Or actually I've ran um, because timing wise, I would still think I would have an extra few seconds to, to run until they would slow down or decide to back out. Run, run, in, run toward where? Um, probably like up to this point. So the, the that middle, would make me, tier? give me like a certain level of flexibility, yeah. Where I can decide to hold and listen for info or like continue into a flank. Because okay. otherwise like if I decide to, if I make that decision from this point, I would have to shift walk which would take longer, um, and I'm just like a further distance away. And if they decide to rotate out, I have no choice but to hold them from here in, in this position, which they would, like I think, expect a lot more easily. And it's just like an easier angle for them to deal with. The only issue is that this, this position is like kind of way on the open. And it is. Yeah, if yeah. you get caught in a 1v1, then you're more or less kind of committed to that. You don't feel like too far away to like escape basically unless you satchel. Yeah, okay. So do you think that even if I'm trying to like consider the, the two options of flanking versus holding, I should have maybe like just kind of stayed here? Or food? actually just committed to an option committed to either of these instead of trying to like keep both paths open? Okay, so what I would say is to click this map originally here. What I would say is that I would probably go here. I would m try to end up somewhere in garage. Right. And this angle in particular is really strong, combined with like this one as well is like really strong. Although this one's like mm -hmm. more, more than done because like now you you don't really have an escape. But at least if you're in garage, you have an escape. Is that you have the ability to to timing the enemy, so you don't mm -hmm. necessarily have to like keep watching over this angle. 24-7, but you could say peek it once and then unpeak and just like I don't know, look at the minimap, do whatever for five seconds. That gives an opportunity for for a timing opportunity where like possibly the enemy could within those five seconds they decide to come back to T-spawn and then they get to I don't know, maybe like this spot and start looking at mid and then you peek mm -hmm. out from garage again and you're timing somebody. Makes sense. As well as that you have an escape, you have a free orb, and the only, really only downside to this is that, I guess two downsides is that, one, you don't get the information like compared to if you play this one and done spot here, you get all the information that you need to tell your team, okay, they're pushing A, they're not pushing A, they're still A, whatever, whatever they're doing at A, you, you, you basically know, and then you can relay that to your team. Right. Although, follow up to that is that this isn't like a, a huge requirement to, to get information because you already have four people at A, and... Most likely those people are A, I don't know, they play like screens, they play nest, they play rafters, they play maze or whatever. The person maze is probably the closest. The person maze is going to get like almost all the information already. So it's not a huge deal if you don't play that spot. Gotcha. And uh, gotcha. I was gonna say, the second thing is that you're, you're kind of far away that if the enemy does decide to commit to A and your team cannot hold A, now your position is like has less and less value. Mm-hmm. But uh, in most situations, I would assume that our team that has four stack day can hold it reasonably well, such that mm -hmm. you can at least decide that oh, I'm going to start pushing up as soon as you know two of my teammates die. Then it's okay. It seems like they're not able to hold a. Let me push up. Or, or if your two enemies die, then okay, I'm not going to push up. I'm going to wait for a possible timing opportunity. Makes sense. I also just realized that spots like this that you mentioned is really great for trying to get like a timing just because all the all of this area is open 
and right. I have plenty of time. Like I can take like six, seven seconds between peaks, right. and I'll be able to catch enemies. Yeah. Um, most likely, instead of like trying to like repick, uh, um, like jiggle an angle like this. Yeah, yeah. Because it's so much narrower, and there's a narrower window of opportunity. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. And I guess if I was a, like a cipher, that would have been really nice. If I just placed like a cam here, and I can just actually play here myself, and that would have been really strong too, because I get the best of best of both worlds. All right. Okay. That's that's a really good point. Thank you. Okay. So let's go back and let's see how we play it. Okay. Outside. Outside. I don't know if that's actually possible. Yikes. So now we're kind of in a non value. Like, we haven't done anything to contribute to this. Yep. And we also gave up our map control. I wasted control. 400, yeah, 400, 400 credits in map control, yeah. Yeah, but yeah we also gave, gave up map control because now at this point the team, enemy team is down 2. And it's probably likely that they're going to decide, oh, we can't really commit to this anymore. We're, we're down 3. Well, I'm sorry, we're down 2. And they seem like they're, they're and we're st our team has stacked A, so any reasonable team is going to think, oh, let's turn around and just try B instead, or let's go mid instead. Mm -hmm. And now you don't, you and your team don't, don't have any information about T spawn, so you're not able, really able to contain them, whereas you had the opportunity to contain them, basically. Right. I'm sure that they're rotating. So now we have to take a less optimal position, unfortunately, playing on top of site, which is way more predictable than playing T-spawn or garage. Tell your team they're already on site. Um, I actually, I'm not actually 100% sure if I should have stayed top site. Are you staying here? Yeah, because... I don't know, it was like, I felt like I already had this feeling it'll be so awkward to try and get a shot on this Sage, which is gonna come for the plant. Mm, true. I would, uh, I mean like, do you, do you talk about like, at this point do you leave? Or... Yeah, at this point, because like, honestly like, I have the Viper wall that's kind of shielding me, right? So, I probably can get a kill freely if I... Maybe like go actually more towards the right and just ping and go for like a wall bang or something or play yep. jump on top of this double box and get an angle that way something like that. Yeah. And because this is just so awkward and I don't I don't know if I can pull off the shot unless Sage their enemy Sage actually doesn't hook the wall and like comes out in the open that would be easy. I think it's it's less awkward than you think because like actually this position is really strong given your situation. That you're in a, um, how to put it, like a less expected position compared to, like, they would expect the enemy, expect one of you guys to come from Snowman or CT or come from right. Meg, for example. Not necessarily like someone's like directly on top of side already. Mm -hmm. Part two is that um, you're able to effectively bait attention while your team, like, rotates to those other positions. Like, it seems like two people are rotating mid, your Viper is in kitchen. Right, and then mm -hmm. you can continue like, banning attention while being on top of site. And you have to be constantly like thinking like, oh, is this raid gonna yolo and drop on top of me, or maybe is this raid gonna like throw a nade at me or whatever, or satchel or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like they don't necessarily know exactly what utility that you have, except that you boom blotted. Right. So would you have made yourself known actually? Depends what you're trying to accomplish. If you're trying to bait attention, then yes. If you're not trying to bait, like you're trying to wait for your teammates, then maybe, maybe no, maybe it depends on the situation. Okay. In this scenario, I would probably make myself known, specifically because you have a guardian. And specifically because you have like this like paper wall in front of you where you can just like spam it and you can probably kill somebody. Or you can probably delay the plants because they're worried about getting spammed if you, if you spam accurately enough. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. If it was like any other situation, or if you had any other gun, then I might think twice about staying here. But 
this is like a golden opportunity because you have a paper wall and you have a guardian. It was like, it can't be much better than that. But, I mean, arguably, if the wall is an actual paper wall and they have medium pen, like, wouldn't it kind of equal out? Or if, like, let's say they have Titan Bando, right? It would actually be worse. Wouldn't it be make more sense for me to, like, wouldn't the penetration advantage be greatest if I'm playing, like, a non-penetrable wall by medium pen weapons? Well, you, you have a high pen weapon. So you do way more right, damage. Right, so I have a people. high pen. So right. shouldn't I play against medium pen through a wall that's not penetrable by medium pen? For example, like I don't know what what's a good example is because yeah. I, I guess would... I don't know the map, the game that well. I'd say just playing through any wall is going to be good enough. Any I mean, wall in if, general. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you want to be like really optimal, you can like shoot at the floor instead of like shooting through this wall in front of you. So that way, like, they have to go through, like, two walls and two walls to hit you, which is really hard to do with medium pen, but really easy mm -hmm. to do if you have a guardian. Gotcha, gotcha. Can you actually go through two walls with the guardian? It's going to be, like, much less damage, but, you st like, again, it's all, all trade-offs where, like, you do much less damage, but you still pay attention, you still do some damage, right. you still, you can still possibly delay the planet because they're white, oh, this guy might kill me, I don't know. I don't know how much damage mm -hmm. he's doing. Gotcha, gotcha. Right, any more questions? Nope. This drop seemed really uh, risky though. I would probably think twice about it, but your Viper got really close to help you, so not a big deal. Alright. Kill. Milky pussy. I have live up. Peek in next year. I have a dart for you. Jet here. Right, I darted, bro. She can't be more specific than that. Don't just say jet here. <laughs> say jet B. Yep, yep. Jet up to B. Yep, just abuse the one way. Actually, I'm not sure if it's much of a one way if they stand far away. I would just give this up actually. Dude, I have two lineups. Yeah, I have two lineups. They're both for B. They're one attack. Come in, number come B. Don't even peek in next year. I have a dark for Jet here. So you fight this jet for a bit. You only see this jet. Then Viper you took us up. You spam a bit. Whatever, whatever. At this point, it looks like it's not going to be a B-Push, and then they made, mm -hmm. made presence known, uh, I'm assuming mid? I don't know what, I darted. So when he dies mid? Yeah. Okay, he died from, from belt. And your team is also has deep people stacked toward B, so at this point I would just leave B. And then worst mm -hmm. case, I'll just let Viper solo it. Could be mid. Yeah. Like this tight angle. I didn't know Like right here, it already seems like really unlikely that they're gonna come bean just because they gotta pick an A. Well, on there? Yeah, I'm Probably get the orb, but no big deal. Oh my god, One's holding, one mid. Two mid, two mid, two mid. Alone on side, alone. Yeah. It's the risk of of Damn, I get shit on, but what shit did they? Oh, the team's eco. Milky, milky. So I mean, it it honestly looked Dude, like the way they play was lineup. just jet lurking, and the rest are a give <laughs> given the information that we had. So oh. I I think it was too much of a risk. Yeah, they're um, actually pretty big risk because they actually they're they should be on an eco round this round. They're on eco, yeah. So, during against eco rounds, you shouldn't take those types of risks yeah, of like looking because now you just gave up a gun to the jet. This is exactly what I would have done if I was the jet, honestly. Oh my god, one's holding. I'm gonna off the Do you have your meditation music on next week? I do. It's not really helping this time. I will. 
Hey. Hey. Two way. Dude, I'm actually dying to the shoot You think I should have shot the Leer? Out, out, fast. Too late. Yeah, we just shot it. Dude, I'm actually dying to the I mean, it makes sense that here that you're, you're specifically not shooting it. So you can sit up here, but this, this is kind of like a solo position. Like, no one can really help you because the Leer is active. Out, out, fast. But I don't know, there could just be a play side defense. What I would do is that I would shoot the Leer and then back off. And like basically just kind of wait for team. Okay. Out, out, fast. But definitely have DQS right now. You gotta like reposition. You don't think you have time to boom bot. So I whiffed this shot and and then after that I question the value of holding with the with the martial or scope weapon. This this headshot angle. Okay. You mean, are you questioning like, if this angle is good or not? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning it at this point because, like, I still need to get the headshot, right? Because it's a, yep. it's a headshot box. Yep. They have to headshot me. Yep. And the chances of them headshotting me is is a lot greater unless I just literally just crouch very, very quickly. Well, why is it a lot greater? Um, because I have a scope weapon that is a martial. True, so... They have a fully automatic weapon, and they have more bullets they can they can spray at you. But I think mm. it's even though they have more bullets, it's not necessarily like a higher chance that, or at least not a significantly higher chance because this is like a mid to long range fight, and and the uh, accuracy comes into play. Where like they could spray a burst of bullets, and then probably all of them are gonna miss, or most of them are gonna miss, and only one might hit you. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. So you're you're because kind of thinking the of one burst as like one shot. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I mean, yes, you are technically you, you are at a disadvantage if they had a vandal or any like any other rifle, but I think I'm maybe just because I'm biased because I'm like I, I play martial a lot that even if I'm martial, I feel pretty confident like taking a headshot here, and then mm -hmm. either surviving or or getting the kill. Gotcha. In worst case, like most likely, I can I can probably just like duck and run away after that initial shot. Okay. Fuck! One on one healing. Actually, so what that tells me is that one, they like the wide swing from belts because that's exactly what he did, and then two, they pre aim this specific spot. Right. Right. Fuck! One on one healing. So not necessarily. That was that, completely pre aim. Like she yeah. literally just. Pretty much aim for me and swung yeah, exactly. me like specifically, not even checking anything else. Right, exactly. Which was crazy to me. Like, but I mean, do you think that was reasonable for the arena to think that somebody would be playing here? Maybe some uh, one of my teammates was playing there, and I should have asked if we've been playing headshot box. Mm, I'd say not. Like, don't have to really think about it too much, but about like what you could have done to prevent this because there's really not much you could do to prevent this but instead think about what information you get from this and how you, you can this, you can right. change your playstyle to adapt to this so that now that we know our reno that went out in the enemy reno likes to wide swing and pre-aim this big spot then for the next subsequent rounds we should expect you to do the same thing and then maybe we play belts maybe we play nest or not nest or ct's nest or okay. rafters what I Don't you think it's a one-off thing though that she did this this particular round? Like, if she pushes A, pushes A again, like I I didn't I wouldn't think that she'd do it again. So why why wouldn't she do it again? I, I I'm I'm just not sure because why would you ever wide swing belt aiming a headshot box without clearing anything else? It, that's mm -hmm. my yeah. So what I'm wondering. So eventually it does become sort of some sort of a mind battle, mind game, right? Mind battle, yeah, 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 true, true, true. But I would say, in general, people tend to repeat the same habits, or tend to repeat the same things that they do in previous rounds. Right, right. Okay. So I guess 
if assuming all things people are acting normally, I can kind of safely think, hey, I get some decent amount of information on how this Reyna plays on the right exactly. So you get some information on how she plays, and you can use that for future rounds. Like maybe next round you play Rafters, maybe next round you play CT Nest, maybe next round you play on top of the the screens, uh, whatever that's called. And just like kind of just like expect the Rayner to fight swing, and then like you can adjust your cross your placement accordingly, so it's like not too tight mm -hmm. in the corner, etc. etc. Gotcha. You know, I okay, I have, a, <clears throat> I have a lower account, list. and those players are like work better than this. So, by the right now, hey. Oh. I don't know if I would buy a judge and a ghost. Oh. You okay? I don't know, I just, uh, I'm just cringing a little bit. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! Ghost. Yeah, I know about that. Seems like you already knew that was a bad idea. Yeah, this is. I did, I and about. it's just, I, I, this was a game where I felt like I was playing on tilt quite a bit. On on B. Yeah, I was gonna say, Akasi is a bit too right now, close. Because, like, if if she wide swings, and yeah. you're expecting to wide swing, that she's gonna be much farther away from the corner. Oh, crap. Alright. Or non B. Right, you can see, like, how far she wide swings. You have to adjust Akasi here. Right on. Mm. Help. Also, vertical placement was off, too. So, yeah. Here, I can just give this up. Just get the information for your team, and then survive. Because if you die, now you, you, your team loses control of A completely. Yep. Yeah, too many and challenges. I did exactly not that, and that actually cost the round, I think. No, it's not good team. Reyna ended up joining them. I think your team is going to lose anyways. Because yeah. they fall apart at B, but... If, they, if your team didn't fall off part B, then the enemy team would, would still definitely like probably win the round if they just play smart mm -hmm. rotated to A. So I normally play very like egolessly, but I don't know why this game, this Reyna, like got into my head a lot for some reason. Well, what happened? <laughs> Jet kills too. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, it's gonna be really hard to ult the jet, but you can always just dash away. Hmm. Oh, perfect. Yep. Just ignore this wall. Okay, never mind, you can break it. I was gonna say, like, this wall is exactly what you and your jet want, which is just like. Right, it actually helps us. Yeah. You can just, yep. like, run to your sage, hop your sage, and push, push the other angle. All together. Hmm. What do you think about this judge? What's your what's your plan? <sighs> um, I mean, bad idea. Like overall, I I mean they have a Sova. They can just throw me out unless I know that there's Sova doesn't drone on A with the team. Um, I know they play together, so most likely, very unlikely. Um, uh, yeah, even if I, um, maybe like good for one, if I hold a good angle, but after that, I won't probably won't be able to get the gun. Um, and then I guess if I do play George, I just have to think about well, what my retreat path is going to be and also the other thing I think this has been bugging me quite a bit is that if I'm preparing to hold a one end on angle then I kind of have to think about expending my utility a little bit so like maybe on attack side this it wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea to judge um given that I can still clear everything with my nade and, and boombot and satchel in to get close. But on defense side, I feel like 
Well, the only thing I can really expend is maybe like my nade before I before I get into the actual position I want to play. So effectively, I've kind of turned myself into a no utility agent by deciding to use judge, and I will have to play close corner as well. It'll be like hard to to get out alive. Yeah. Um, if I do play on an angle, then I, w I would have to think about really like be ready to satchel out very quickly and reposition. Yep. So that's what I'm thinking. I don't know if I actually play up here in this nest, which would just, pff, I don't know, be like suicidal unless I was thinking, hey, if their Viper's going to ult in, then I'm just going to like actually hold this corner, hope I don't get wall banged, and then I get some value. Um, but I don't think I was thinking that. Okay. So I would say that the judge is not necessarily a bad idea, but that it's going to be really hard to play A with your judge because it's, there's too many angles to, to, to worry about. Mm -hmm. Unless you were a smoker or something and you can like use your smoke to help isolate angles. Like, for example, you put a smoke on maze, so you only have to worry about the left. Well, at least I say only, but more more likely only have only have to worry about the left right or maybe you just burn both smokes and you play inside the smoke or something like that but that's like kind of like your only way to like guarantee a close because when you, when you use a judge ideally you're you're playing a position that there's only one angle you have to worry about and mm -hmm. and uh that it's a close range angle right and so for example on, on like haven for example like playing close range of garage is like really strong with judge or right. if you're playing in a series like in like the cubby that's really strong with uh -huh. judge uh-huh because there's only one angle to worry about and it's a close range angle and there's that with many... icebox because of the yeah. verticality to have to even if i hold like maze i have to worry about pipes right yeah i yeah i just realized that so, so no, icebox general, is just yeah. difficult i think in general, on icebox, it's hard to judge, but there's some mm. specific situations that you can judge, and if you make it really, you can judge. And probably your best bet would be if you're gonna judge, I would probably go B and play like one of the cubbies, and then mm. you'll either listen for any footsteps if they come B, and then you can tell your viper or whoever happens to be next to B to say, hey, play off my contact, so at least that you can get some value after you die, because. If the all five push you, then you probably only kill one, maybe two, mm -hmm. before you get traded out. And uh, let's see what else. Other thing too with the judge is that um, it'd be good to play retake with it. Actually, if you actually and think about it, with rays for sure. Yeah, with rays it'll be decent. I mean, in general, is like retaking with, with with a judge or a shotgun is like really hard. But because that they mm -hmm. have a viper with alt, that most likely that. If the enemy team plants the bomb, takes sight, whatever, that for post plant they're gonna use a viper wall, which is like an, an ideal time to have a shotgun. Right, right. But in, in most, most of the situations, if, if they didn't viper wall, then probably retaking with a judge would be really, really hard. Mm -hmm. If you had a judge and you're trying to retake against a viper ult, would you, would you generally like try and spam it into the into the ult to like either get information or let let it be known that you have a judge or would you kind of dry peek everything and just walk into everything i would uh, just like buy that, up. or do you need more more variables to figure out if that's the so right you, decision so you don't want to just like spray into a into a spoke of a judge mostly because like your your bullets don't really do much damage unless they're like close to point blank it's not really like unless you're you're the viper or you're the the enemy team defending against the the raid take right. Yeah, it's not a spectre. It's not a not a phantom. It's not yeah. a viper that does like full damage, mm. no matter the range, right? The judge only does like good damage within like I don't know, ten meters or less. If it's beyond that, then basically all you're doing is just giving away your position. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so. Finding a judge here, not necessarily a bad idea, but I, what, I, what I probably would have done is, is play B and then play uh, retake on A. So like give okay. up A and then just like try your best to hold B. Makes sense. Or alternatively, 
you could also if you know that's gonna be a b hit that you don't even necessarily play inside the, the b cubby but instead you play on uh, like right outside of sight so let's say mm -hmm. let's go back to the drawing board so not necessarily playing here i mean this is a good spot if you have someone who can trade you out like some if someone's like playing yellow the back playing yellow or something then you can get a lot of free kills yeah, by, by trading you out but if that's not possible and you know that's going to be a hit then you can decide to just fall back and play here and what this does is that you'll stand here someone comes here plants the bomb and then you have like a really perfect close range shots free shots or if Sage walls, you can just like break the wall immediately. Mm -hmm. And if the Viper walls, now it's like you're in prime position to like tap bomb and then they have to like, they have to forcefully keep like one person here, one person here, whatever. Like this is all like within judge range, right? Mm -hmm. gotcha. So all good things if you play here with a judge and specifically that they have, they, they have or are planning to use Viper wall. Makes sense. Right, and then there's some tiny details that you can do too. So like, if you do play here and the sage walls, the sage walls like this, pretty default default wall. That it's like it's just satchel. Um, I mean, if you satchel, they're gonna expect that. They're gonna expect you to be on top of it. But right. you, if you shoot the wall, now you know. Oh, now that they know that you have a judge, and they can be more more way more cautious of that of that. Mm -hmm. But another thing you could do is that you can just satchel to break the wall. And then, then use like the element of surprise with your judge because then maybe they're expecting you to have a phantom or something and not really expect you to have a judge. That's actually interesting. Yeah, so like just using the satchel instead, maybe like combined with like, uh, probably not a pistol because then they know I'm trying to hide something. Yeah. yeah. So I can use two satchels to break that wall. Yep. And you can also like... You Bounce your nade like this, bounce it off the wall, lands here, and that can mm -hmm. use, be used for stall, etc. All good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to VLC. Cool, cool. Yeah, maybe, but you're not patient. <laughs> oh, I know what I'm thinking here. Like, I guess with the nade, I'm trying to get a little chip damage. And then I'm actually trying to commit to playing like a rat, the zombie. Oh, not on this. Okay, pays off. One cross off side. I don't know about keeping this. Yeah, you're sticking out the wall. Saw the tip of my gun, I guess. Like they, like you, you kill this guy with judge. That's all you're lucky enough, and then you stick around like. The enemy's gonna expect, expect you to be in the smoke. I don't know what you're expecting here. Yeah. I think actually your teammate was uh, dead at me. Go back here. Gets these two. Dies. And then you see the other two here. Even right here, I would, I would consider. Let's say it's a good good idea or not. Consider trying to get. I mean, my if I work with Sova, that it could have worked. Or or if, because you had you know there's Venus alone, just like try to coordinate with your teammates to like try to like force this fight early because you have a potential two v one here. Mm -hmm. Maybe like maybe you boom bot, maybe ask your solo with the drone or dart, whatever. Ask your solo to hey swing with me, I'm gonna peek. Three, two, one, whatever, mm -hmm. countdown. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, whatever you can do to kinda of get out of this sticky situation. Even maybe I don't know, maybe you just satchel away or something. So that maybe you can go back mm -hmm. to where your sage died next to your silver so that you can pick up a gun. Because otherwise with this judge you're not really gonna be useful. Mm -hmm. Bye. Maybe, maybe attacking my half. Attacking my half. Give me a rotate. Give me a rotate. 
stage wall here. They didn't wall yeah, through. Wall I think we rotate. She's breaking wall. Go through mid. They're already waiting. Yeah, I don't think you give us up. So like, yes, stage wall. What is, what is the they rotate. What is it? A? Wall stage a, wall right? here. Yeah, she wall. They didn't wall through. Yeah, try not to say here. Try to be more specific. Because if you if you're the Silva and then someone just mm -hmm. says they walled here. Like, what, here, what is here, yeah. Right? What is that? Does that mean in mid? Like a two? <laughs> So try to be more specific gotcha. pullouts, and then even if the sage walls, wherever, like don't just think, oh, that's it. I can't get to those wall guys. Like, let me just turn around and go somewhere else. Like you can still pressure the wall. You can still break the wall. Break and then, it and then yeah. try to go. Yeah. And then you can go, or you can just decide to leave. But either way, just yeah. breaking the wall automatically puts pressure on the enemy, any enemy sage. So like like the longer that the wall go, stays up, then the more and more value is gonna get. Nice. So I mean, like I, I guess, I guess, arguably, there's like very, there's a few kind of exceptions where that wall, if she, especially if she walled a main, it just makes them very difficult to push out of a. Um, and there can be a case made for like not breaking the wall if we actually intend to go B. Does that make sense? Like, we only have to worry about getting pushed from mid. If if they wall themselves off, so they're they're kind of giving up that whole map control by by walling. Yeah, I would say oh, there's a different way to think about this. So like um, if it was uh, if it was like a a five five and there was only one bomb site, like who do you think would win? Or well, who do you think is at an advantage? Uh defenders. Defenders, right? And then imagine depending on like how many lanes there are and right. stuff, but imagine yeah, if there were general. five lanes or ten lanes or like ten bomb sites, like who has the advantage? Attackers, attackers, because right. you know they can go anywhere. Right. Like it's the pot, but it's about the possibility. Exactly. So, yeah. as an attacker, it's it's in your interest to have more options or threaten more options that we could go away because the wall is broken, or we could go somewhere else, right? So the wall gotcha. is is better for a defense where it's sh it's shutting down the possibility of an, a push toward A. Therefore, the sage can just like re, re divert her attention toward mid or re divert her attention toward toward B. And okay. same same goes for everyone else. Like it, the other, it's not just sage who's playing A, but there's probably one or two other people also on A. And if long that the wall is up at A, then the less reason that they have to keep watching over A, and they can just stack more people in mid, for example. And you guys are thinking that, oh, okay, we don't have to worry about an A flank, let's go mid. Well, now you're going to run into an, like a three stack in mid, for example. Mm -hmm. the, the example I'm thinking of, I guess, is closer to like smoking the entrance of Sea Long and Haven to like deny information, for example, so you can like walk up to it. That's, I think that's kind of more what I'm thinking. Like if I'm looking at it from like either a map control information perspective, hey, there can be situations where, yeah, the wall secures them from the, the the opposite side, but it also, in a way, you're kind of telling us, hey, like this is off limits, but we also can't like cross to to push you. Yeah, so I think that's a bit different though, right? Because yeah. A wall blocks off both teams, but a smoke only discourages one one team from pushing. Right, right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay, so in like I guess ninety nine percent of cases, you just kind of want to break the wall to to open up that possibility. Yeah, I would say so. If it's if you're given opportunity, I would probably do it. Mm hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> Oh, I'm just gonna run out fucking kitchen like crazy. Mm, it's too way too risky. So your team is already like getting onto B site like pretty easily, and mm. they know that you're in kitchen. Like your goal right now is not necessarily to even kill anybody. Your goal right now is to, is to survive. The longer that you're in kitchen alive, the longer that the enemy team has to worry about you, has to deal with you, right? Gotcha. Before they before they can get to B, or if they ignore you, get to B. Now you have like really golden flank for. Like free basically, which mm -hmm. shouldn't be like most likely they're not gonna just ignore you. But but uh, like yeah, the longer that you stay alive here, like the 
the, the more and more value you're going to get because the, you're getting lots, lots, lots and lots of attention. And they, gotcha. they, they can't just like full run it, full send it to it B and like plan the retake because they, they always have to have someone watching kitchen or always have someone watching bed, for example. Or watching you're some absolutely sort of right. Fight. Yeah, so in this case, like passive pressure is probably yeah. better than actual aggression. Yeah. Fighting, play mm. together. By my viper, holy fuck. Oh god, I cursed your mom tonight. I already did the art. You're sorry. For sex? No. <clears throat> you should just uh, get your. What's it? Your viper's eagle. We're at the wrong right. spot in the wrong. on the planet of the earth. I'm Take a very tight peek and then it's it. Don't commit. I'm eagle peeking this Reyna. Even that was a little bit too wide. It's like... Wrong. What was too wide? This peek is too... No, On like, the planet of the earth. Like after this smoke, it's like... Here like, um, you're thinking that you want to stick around and you, hopefully you notice that this is going to be a straight up 1v1 because your jet's leaving. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. therefore you should be like really uncommitted in the way that you take this fight. So you... Mm -hmm. you so instead of like wide swinging, you want to... Keep the tight, keep your peaks peak tight, and probably take a maximum one shot and just just leave. Yeah. So like here, it's like this is like reasonably tight. Like reasonably tight. if the smoke was in here, like this is like a reasonably tight peak. And it's like a little bit wider. Like, here this, it's a here. little wide. Here's a little wide. Here's like really wide, right? Now like if yep. imagine if the Reyna was like hugging the left side of of that uh, that wall there, then you're like you're stuck in this fight, right? Mm -hmm. And you're gonna be you're gonna be more committed than you want want to be. Where, mm -hmm. where you, what you want to Wait. be is you, you want to take one shot and just leave, or take one shot and then get behind cover so you can like prepare your next shot because you have a marshal, right? Yeah, that would be the marshal play style: is right. narrow, quick peaks without without commitment. Right, exactly. You're right. I'm eagle peeking this right now. Give me a heal. But it pays off. Huge. I don't know if that it does anything. I guess I, I was more thinking like my jet's pushing this this pallet area, and I don't I don't I want to prevent her from getting peaked like by boiler. I mean, um, it makes sense. I, I don't. I just don't think that the nade is actually gonna land. What do you think is gonna land? Like, like it's just the execution. So the way I naded it was probably not great. Yeah, your nade just basically goes all the yeah. way into CT spawn, which like no one's gonna be there. Gotcha. If you if you plan to help her, yeah. you should just push her for like here you're going tube like you don't know if someone is waiting in tube and if, and if there is like this is not a fight you want to be taking you have a marshal not a fight with marshal yeah and then you realize it okay you gotta bring your pistol vibe on B vibe on B I don't know I don't know what we're doing here this is insane animations. No. They had animations, that's why I got it. I think I should have bought this round. Why was it no animation? Mm. No, none of the battle I would still bonus. I'm biased because like, I'm, like I'm marshal a lot. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay. Clear right side. Is that a lineup? Yep. Interesting. Nading screens. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> one on top, one on top. Yeah, boobah, just go anywhere. It's, it's supposed to be a light out. I don't know, I probably fucked it up. It's a, there's one that clears left maze and then there's one that clears right side. Um, yeah, I don't know. Probably fucked it up. Yeah, big deal. Keep on. Uh, I don't know about reloading. You don't need to reload. You have 15 bullets. Don't commit to this. Just run back will be. You have a lot of time. I'm so ass! I don't understand! My crosshair was right there! Bonus. So far, just minor details that that add up, that snowball basically. You think I could have? You think I should have grabbed bomb and rotated out of A through through T spawn? I think the first step without is, knowing the yeah. the viper. The first step is grabbing anymore. grabbing a bomb immediately instead of reloading. Well, I guess the first step is, <sighs> yep. is not reloading because reloading is gonna waste of time. You have 13 bullets, you can always just pick up Sage's gun if you need to. And mm -hmm. second step is that. Just pick a bomb immediately, and then plan about where do I go? Do I, do I, do I commit to okay. A? Do I turn back with B? Etc. Okay. But because you spent so much time here, we're like at 110, you reload, then 
Now you get the bomb. This is all you wasted like six seconds, right? That if you played a bit faster, that you could have gotten the bomb plan already, or you had a better shot of like mm -hmm. rotating somewhere. Mm-hmm. Instead of now, like now you decide to plant, but now like now Viper's in position to. I'm so happy. I don't understand. My gotcha, cluster was gotcha. right there. Okay, the only, all he does that was a uh, bonus. Yeah, they don't have any money. They don't have anything. Plus, he is kind of low for that. But... Mm. I don't know what that satchel is for. I don't know what that satchel is for. <laughs> so far, he just blew two satchels for for no reason. We also haven't done anything to this fight, okay, now we just have much flank. I would just like push to mid here. Oh, uh, I don't know about the way I cleared that, like it was so sketchy. I don't know what I'm doing. What do you mean? I, I mean like somebody could easily be mid, right? And I just kind of cleared it like... I don't really clear anything. They just kind of swung around very close to the corner like that. Yeah, it's kind of a lazy, lazy clear. Yeah. But not a huge deal. What I'm more focused on is, is that one um, that we kind of like do nothing while your team's already kind of executing. Like they could have gotten a fight mm -hmm. with someone at yellow. They could have gotten a fight with someone at snowman with sight. And mm -hmm. so far, we haven't done anything to like help with any of that. We've just and we blew mm -hmm. up two satchels to, to like <laughs> to like do nothing basically. And the boom, like, the boom bot is like yeah, and completely the boom bot redundant. Oh, yeah. so, so I guess far, as Rays, you really have to be like in front of your team yeah. a lot more yeah. to get any value. I feel like I boom bot like after my team, and that's just the saddest thing in the world. Yeah. So yeah. Your boombat will be more useful to like help entry, or if you realize that both vipers have ultimates, then if you can expect that that the one of the vipers is gonna ult this round, then mm -hmm. you can save your boombat for that ultimate. Mm -hmm. Instead of just like for yeah. the nade too, you know. Yeah, here we just blew all utility, and then most likely none of them like got any value. Mm. And again, so far we haven't got any value, but now, okay, we start watch flank, so that's some value. Um, quick, I, I yep. guess maybe more of a macro question, or um, but is there a way to kind of start tracking, like, how much your utility usage is getting value? Is there, like, a stat website or a tool you can use to start thinking, start looking at, like, all right, like, you use satchel to take this meter no, really. amount of space or like you did this much damage kind of a thing <clears> and <throat> just kind of track it over time not really and even if there was it's not going to be accurate because not uh -huh. all utility is measured in terms of damage right I, yeah true okay so that is just something that you have to like constantly ask yourself like is my utility do accomplishing anything Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Like you know, like with sky blind blinds, you can see like how many you blinded, and I think hopefully the game tells you at the end of the match how many you blinded. Yeah, but like. And same thing with like dart, but like I don't know about. Like even then, like, just because you blinded someone doesn't necessarily mean that it's like hundred percent value. There's some yeah. cases where you blind someone and it, maybe it's just a blind just for info or you're not really able to follow up on it. Right. Or maybe it's a or blind like they that... they turned away yeah. from it or something. Maybe it's a blind that you know that people are A, you blind them anyways, and then no one's in a position to follow up on the blind. You blind them, yeah, you, get, the you get the info that they're blinded, but it doesn't really even tell you anything new. So that okay. is an example of like a completely waste, wasteful blind that, yeah, maybe you blind five people, <sighs> but it doesn't tell you anything new. Gotcha. Well, it doesn't get you any value. Okay. Okay, so here yeah. we decided to watch flank, and then we decided to push to flank, which I really like. 
Because so far, if if an enemy was flanking, then they would probably be on the flank already, or they would probably be somewhere in mid. Mm -hmm. At this point, I would tell your team because you have this this plan of like I'm gonna continue flanking and then push them from mid, that you should tell your team like play slow, or mm -hmm. you could even consider yep, yep, tell yep. your team like rotate toward A, for example. Yep. Like like you guys can. Or, well, I guess it kind of depends if you're very confident if that no one's A. But probably what I would do is just tell your team to play slow. Tell to them play that, slow, first yeah. of all, yeah. Tell them that you're flanking, flanking behind the enemy. It'll take, on all 10 seconds or whatever. Just, like, tell them to play slow. Wait for you to make contact. Mm -hmm. And then once you do make contact, then your team can execute quickly. Whether that's executing on to B or deciding to rotate or whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm. What, what am I gonna talk? I don't know. I'm, I'm putting my wall back up. That, that was backside, that was backside. <laughs> Let's wait for Ruse. Yeah, 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 wait for Ruse. This I see one. I'm gonna drop my wall. Yeah, if, you, if you said it earlier, like now they realize it, right? Like, if you said it earlier, maybe that your jet that could be alive. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Where am I? Nice. Alright, now we go fast. I don't know where Sova is. We're putting our wall. I'm backing off. Nice. I'm going to your kitchen wall, instead. Wall, <laughs> Nice. Oh, good yeah. shot, Cookie Monster. <laughs> I think even going to is not even necessary. As soon as you kill the Viper, nice. I would just like, I would consider just rotating all the way to rejoin your team at B. I don't know where so Okay. I'm backing off. Nice. Okay. And definitely now, at, at this point, now that there's a 3v1, that. I'm going out kitchen well, instead. It's too risky to go, go to kitchen because Silva could be kitchen. <laughs> mm. Let's see. Hey, this is gonna be a one one that you don't want to take. Yeah. And also, like, I, I'm i thinking of, like, hey, like, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, reposition yeah. after this Viper kill, but generally, if I think Viper got killed, they would kind of think of the lump clump the whole area together and consider Kitchen already unsafe anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, my reposition is, is not really that all doing all that much. If you're gonna reposition, so I would uh, go CT spawn. I would turn around, go back to mid, go to CT spawn. And then mm -hmm. continue pushing through snowman, for example. Snowman, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Gotcha. I have this friend, right? That's I'm gonna. Really I'm just gonna send Boombot under tube, and then and then do the. Okay, that's fuck. That's fuck. <laughs> you know. So the plan was actually to have my jet smoke mid and satcho across and then uh, uh, sorry Boombot across and make them think I cross but the Sova darts us. Sova is uh, boiler. Yeah. I think uh, I don't know if your jet smoke will really cover the entire cross. That it it, it should t theoretically that's what would have happened. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Let's play safe. Oh my gosh, don't beat this. I don't know what the is doing. Last one spawned. I don't know what the soul is doing either. <clears throat> do you want this, Sheriff? Yes, I do. I mean, I mean, we I dart. You should, you should, you should dart boiler. <laughs> Wait a minute. Might be one more, maybe one more. No, okay, yeah, we can. <laughs> oh my more. god. Yeah, I'm, I'm going through B. Yeah, I'm just gonna walk. Sage, make some noise. Actually, Sage yeah. has all. I don't know if you've been pressing tab this round, again but after I'd like that to see pick. more tabs so I can see the enemy economy. Yeah, my friend probably, probably, like, they watch. You want me to tab it. more? Yeah, tab. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's especially during, uh, during the buy phase that we want to be. Planning how we're gonna play this round based on what the enemy team's economy looks like. Like I, I swear to you, I, I totally do. I by just, the way, a this, lot. It's this game. I don't know, but I'll keep yeah. that in mind. Yeah. Right, right, probably, See, I'm well, doing it. I'm they they doing watch, it right they there. Watch kitchen, by the way, a lot. It was like too quick. Are you really looking at the money? I can <laughs> I mean, probably I would expect them to half buy or force buy. They're probably right. forced, right? Get out! Get out of there! Get out of there! We need your ult, you gotta yeah, pick. Well, like last time they were on eco. So easy. Like, if you realize that last time that they were on eco, then you, then you would realize that like playing this close Hold by yourself is like a really bad idea. Uh huh. 
Yeah, they watch kitchen by the way a lot. Alright, get out, get out of there, get out of there. We need your ult, you gotta yeah, pick. Know, I'm, you know, I'm, just 5v3 is so easy. Has sight. I'm coming for a plant. Is everything clear? I should be under tube somewhere, like in orange area. Nice. In general, for if plant. you have full sight control, like your jet mm -hmm. is like pushing to mid, fully cleared, and your, your so is pushing to the stomach, fully cleared, that I will plant as out in the open as possible. Yeah, is true, true, true. I should be under tube somewhere, like in orange area. Nice. One more, one more, one more. I don't know what the one more means, yep, like... Help your jet, help your jet, I don't know when you're shooting this way. He's like boy over here. I think when I'm giving the comms, I'm thinking like very much from my perspective. So I'm always thinking like, all right, feel, he's feel, right there, but that it doesn't mean anything to my do teammates. Flawless. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I gotta fix that. <clears throat> okay, so now the enemy team is on eco. Possibly one person can have a rifle, like the viper, possibly. Yeah. And Maybe like yeah, yeah. Viper ult and then play close range weapons or something like that if they force. Yeah. Nice, nice I probably expected to have a, 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 nice a spectre nice actually. Nice At least. No, we haven't lost. No, we haven't lost. Also, your team's super rich, so you should probably yeah, offer to drop pistols. Oh, uh, true. That's true. We're maxing out. Oh. Yeah. I haven't thought of that. So I like to start here. All right, let's go. If you, if this is the actual lineup, you should be telling your team this because like your team is mm. is already like pushing on the site and like. I should say that every yeah. single time. I probably don't even need to do it. Honestly, like yeah. it's way too late. So this drone, <laughs> you know, this this boomba is not getting any value. Mm. Your jet is already like flying through maze already. That's actually a huge takeaway, I think. I'm just gonna make a note just to like be aware of my team positioning versus mine when I use the utility. I mean, it sounds basic, but especially for me, yeah, I, I think, think I'm not doing that. Yeah, I think you just need to like be more cognizant of the utility that, you, that you're using. That that you're spending this utility for a reason, right? Not just that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a lineup. Let me just use my lineup. But I'm doing this movement to clear maze. And if I realize that my team is already pushing before my boom bot, or they're exposing themselves to maze before my boom bot gets there, then mm. what, like, what is my boom bot doing, right? So yep, either, yep. You, either you should choose to not boom bot, or you should try to boom bot earlier, or you mm. should tell your team, hey, wait for my boom bot. Mm -hmm. So I would probably like tell them <clears> during <throat> freeze time or something. Kind of Ideally, we should already be talking about like what side are we going to hit, what am I gonna do? Yeah. Wait for X, Y, Z, like all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's ideal, but you can't always control your teammates. So again, mm -hmm. you look at body language to be like, okay, all five of my teammates are hugging the A barrier. Well, they're probably gonna push A. Absolutely. <clears throat> and then you start thinking, okay, what what lineups do I have for A? What can I do to help my A push, etc. Yeah, yeah. So just reading off of what my team's doing. Okay, okay. Yeah, so yeah, Boombot's kind of waste, and it's unfortunate because if we save their Boombot, that will probably be really useful if we run into a Viper ult. So, let's see what happens. Here we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta hop a jet. We're too late. Just like already, like, our jet is on 410. Like, she's exposed to like 10 angles by standing on 410. And then no one on your team is, is is ready to help her. Like she could get a gunfight, get into a gunfight from someone who decides to, to peek from screens or rafters or whatever angle, and nobody can really help her. Hmm. Your viper is too busy getting orb. Your sage is too far behind. Your silver is alting or recovering from his ult, and now you're also too far behind because you're doing a boombot lineup. Mm -hmm. So right away, I I I would consider just like bringing out my knife and just like running ace like as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. To like just in case there's like a gunfight that could break out. Well, it's like it's probably gonna break out anyways. So just like that, our jet's dead. No one can help her. There was an enemy jet that's on top of this the screen sign or whatever. Yeah, and we're kind of a, a satchel fail. Nope, nope, nope. 
Alright. Should have res me, honestly, but. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. I'm not doing nope, anything nope, nope. this round. <laughs> You're not doing it exactly. Hey, okay, the wall goes up. You look at the wall. So, you, I don't know what I'm doing there. Why am I looking at the wall? Like, yep. I mean, you you, <sighs> you should double check the wall just just in case she accidentally left the gap. But once you realize, mm. okay, there's no gap. The sage is like perfectly safe. Let me like do something else more valuable. Right. Then right. Just, yeah. Hey, you're putting this on. Uh, yeah, this doesn't matter. On what? I was. It, you know, it's, you're putting it on YouTube, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just I'll just do better. You know, if there's a next time. Okay. Okay. So you realize that yeah, looking at the wall is kind of waste of time. By the way, the wall goes up. I'm gonna hop our hop our viper because the viper is like pushing aggressively out of maze and like peeking peeking after. Mm -hmm. She's like she's automatically hunting for a fight, looking for a fight, even though she. Probably shouldn't be, but whatever. She's doing it. We gotta help her. Viper could be flying. Nope, nope, nope. And then even if Viper was flanked, like it's not your job to necessarily like take that one v one like here. Right. Viper could be so flying. We turn around, and then we're thinking, oh, we're gonna take this one v one. No, that's not your job. You, your your job right now is, is to make sure none of your teammates like are alone. Because mm -hmm. like if Viper is flanked, you're gonna get into this one v one and. You're gonna give the enemy viper a chance to clutch, right? She kills mm -hmm. you one one, kills the sage one one. If she if she wins four v one, four one ones in a row, then she wins the round. Mm -hmm. Nope, nope, nope. I mean, if you really, really do want to watch flank because someone else is watching flank, then try to play in a, in an uncommitted fashion. Like hold a really, really tight angle, mm -hmm. like a tiny pixel, or whatever, just to get an efficient that you need. Or you just like jiggle peek, you don't really commit to any sort of fight, jiggle a corner or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then play for information rather than playing for kills. Yep. <clears throat> we can just skip through, it's yeah. not really, yeah. You kinda know what's gonna happen. Like, you know that the last person is like right in front of the sofa. Wait here, I was just I was just like running for knife out already. I know Viper is going in. I would run up for run up for knife out. Help a, help a Viper. Here we just like we're shooting at nothing. But what's likely to happen is our Viper is gonna is gonna get to everyone their Viper. You know that pocket? Yeah. See what happens. She's probably gonna die. Maybe maybe not. Okay, she didn't die. Oh, the misery. Guys, why didn't we have that? I don't know. I'm gonna, I dinked the guy with Phantom and I'm Defaulting? about to shoot my second shot. Defaulting? Okay. I'm sending a boom buff for you guys. Alright, alright, that can happen. Oh, no. That's just unlucky. They took too much space on A. Sofa's got a really good lurk. Hold on, let me get a better lurk. Let me get a better lurk. I'm just gonna knife out and just like walk so, like, all escape. the way. You don't know if someone's still away. A though. Oh, At this point, you should tell your team to come in, come in. All the way in, I'm deep, I'm deep. Yep, kill Sage. Yeah, come in, let's go in, go in. Harry? Yeah. Like, you should tell him much earlier. All the way, all the way. Oh, I should have hit that. Mm. Once you like clear rafters and you need like fully clear rafters, but okay, we can just assume rafters is clear. All the way in, I'm like once you oh, I don't screens, know. Or... I'm just kind of like half-assing it. Like I'm not really a knife out. Yeah. Running or shift walking. I'm, yeah. You have to be like more constant cognizant of like your your peaks here and like your angle clearing. Make sure you're you're clearing all angles unless there's a the reason that you're you're skipping specific angles because you know maybe your team is dying. They need your help and you want to play faster, etc. Mm -hmm. I'm deep. I'm deep. But here, like. Your team is not necessarily like they're they're in like a, a non-committed like they can, they can always choose to just fall back. They're not really committed on site. And at this point now, you, you, now that you've cleared the entirety of site plus screens, and now you're, you're looking to see the spawn and such, you should just tell your team, hey, have a just rotate a. But instead, it's mm -hmm. like instead it's your your t your team realizing that instead of you calming it to them. 
Yeah, come in. Let's go A, go A. That's the Viper saying go A, but it should have been you saying like, hey, I'm going to point to A, hey, like turn around, mm -hmm. go A, you have cleared screens, I've cleared Raptors. Tell, tell them exactly all the areas that you've cleared. So you cleared A okay. site, you cleared Raptors, you killed screens, you cleared CT spawn, you cleared half of mid. So it makes them feel more and more confident like, yeah, A's clear, yeah, okay, mid's clear, whatever, whatever. Ah, uh, okay. So I kind of like tell them, let them know my intention, first of all, right? Yeah. That I'm going to lurk A. And then second of all, I can kind of in real time let them know yeah. what I'm clearing. And yeah. maybe lastly, like I can kind of say, hey, maybe we could do X, Y, Z going forward, capitalizing on the lurk. Yep. Okay. So, so that way it, it slowly builds up so that it's not just that you don't say anything until you get up to screens. <clears throat> until you like you get up to this All point the and then suddenly someone says hey go away have a like, that's like it feels like kind of sudden right but if you mm -hmm. build up to it say that hey play slow at b make noise and i'm gonna look a and then as you're looking through it you say i have a site a is clear or you say rafter is clear maze is clear greens play well maybe not maze but like probably like mm -hmm. the, the more important things after you play site like rafters screens ct spawn mid and you yep, just continue yep. looking, playing more and more and more, like that slowly builds up more and more confidence to your team instead. Like, oh, A is like slowly becoming more and more safe and more and more of a better idea to go. And I, I guess that has a benefit of <clears throat> making them play more and more passive and getting ready yeah. to, to right. get out instead of all of a sudden, like now, I think Viper is still yellow. Like if she, a wall, she roll out, ran out of wall, she might not be able to like get out. Yeah. If she knew it in advance, then she could start repositioning. Yep. Yeah, come in. Let's okay. go. Ahead, go ahead. is good for seven right here. Oh, hold on. No, 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 no. Jinx it, jinx it. Alright, uh, you got it. Oh, um, what did you know? I'm deep, I'm deep. Yep, he'll sit. Yeah, come in. Let's go. Ahead, go ahead. is good for seven right here. Tiny detail, but I actually wouldn't go through Snowman. I would actually go up through these stairs here at the kitchen. Specifically mm -hmm. because it gives you more options. So like if you do go Snowman and you find someone, you kill them, right? Now that they know that you're either Snowman or you're CT. But you have less options. But if you go mm -hmm. Kitchen, you could be anywhere. You can go Snowman, you can go CT, you can continue pushing through Kitchen, you can drop to go mid, you can go to two, right? Way more options. That's true. That's true. Oh no, jinx it, jinx it. Alright, you got it. I mean, it was mm. the way I peaked it was kind of slow. Oh, no, no, no. Like, I kind of shift walked into our sights. Oh no, jinx it, jinx it. I wonder if someone like, like, you saw can... you or something because like she suddenly decided to start walking. Why is he ADS? She ADS too. Right? Oh, no, 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 jinx yeah. it, jinx it. But I mean, regardless, if you look at my movement, it's not really like. Yeah. I know, I, I heard the footsteps, I'm not ready to... I, don't I think this Reyna's cheating, how did she know I was holding S shot box? Yeah, let's go try to swing me. It's a little I sus. Maybe. Not a big deal, you had the right idea. I just... I just straight up got out aim. And I get tilted and just get this Reyna and die. Yep. Yeah. Take it to me when we won. They 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 know I'm lurking here though. It's fine, it's fine. Alright, Boombar out. They clear slows. Okay, Except the left. I keep getting on top of this box and don't know what to do because of the one way. Just push through like, it. This yeah. one way is it's only a one way for you, it's not one way for your teammates. Right, right. And your team is more likely to make push contact than you are. Uh-huh. So you're you're like wasting time just standing on the side of the smoke, just just push through the smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one thinking is that your so is gonna like your so is peaking right now. I mean technically he's not peaking that much because there's like a, a viper wall plus viper ultimate, whatever. Mm hmm But I would probably expect him always I would expect him to like Make first contact with the enemy, and if we're just standing on the side of the smoke, well, we can't do anything to help him. Yeah. I'm just playing like a, I don't know, very lurker, very passive, I don't know. Oh, this. 
<laughs> I don't know, man. It's a really bad game. Playing on top of like we're getting on top of 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 yellow is like kind of risky when they have black wall because like this is the only thing that the enemy's gonna look at just on top of yellow. This is the yeah. only thing they can see. Everything else is smoked off. Second thing is that I wouldn't really alt here. I would wait until you know for sure that the enemy is like inside. They're in. yeah, yeah, they're in, right? Then it's like pretty much guarantee that you're gonna kill someone. You just like alt inside the, the ultimate or inside the weapon. Yeah. Yep, yep. Or you can like you can wait for a tap as well. And you can just like now you ult and then that's also pretty guaranteed. Like way more way more guaranteed options than just like checking into some two people. Hundred percent. Look at this! Look at this! You have the vape ball. Just play with the vape ball. Yeah, yeah. And the vape ball just kind of goes to waste. Like the better way to do this is that that uh, you get your team to plant, and they're probably scared of planting because there's a, a sage inside the inside the smoke. So it would really help if you had your boombat to like. To deal with that sage, or really help if mm. you just like be with your team to help them plant ACP. And once mm -hmm. the bomb is planted, then you have people scattered around this inside the white ball. Plus, you have like let's say you have like two people cross flying from yellow, and then like that's all the angles you have to worry about. That's it. Mm -hmm. I guess here I'm. I was. Um, I might have been thinking, hey, like we need to get the plant down, but. The biggest threat, honestly, is somebody playing on top, and we don't really have any line of sight. So that's why I got on there, but then I decided to ult and try to like kill this viper. So if you're worried about someone playing on top, while well, like let's say you like you plant the bomb and someone like from top sprays you down, then throw your yeah. nade there, and your nade. Throw my will... nade, or, yeah. yeah, or just like wall bang or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. You realize you have better options there. I don't know what I'm doing here. I just gotta get out. It's gonna waste time. And I just back myself in. Wait, that's not bad, nice. Oh, you're so good. Just leave. I'm gonna take this. Okay, now you can take it because you have a micro with you. Uh, I just keep going back. I need help, guys. One kitchen. Oh. So your team, oh, your sage is now in sight. Yeah, yeah. Your sage is yellow. Mm. One kitchen. So yeah, you have to be really careful about getting you back to into sight. Mm. One net. Uh, I'm just like, I put myself in a position where one was kitchen, one was under tube, and one was behind me, so... Yeah. And literally everybody heard me satchel up there, Jet saw me, I dropped, so everybody knows where I am. It's giving them free wall hacks, basically. Yeah, even the situation here, I would just like kind of give up mid unless you're really confident that you can push with the Viper to mid to B. Mm -hmm. That probably and get like, traded out. And yeah. Get, yeah, and get traded out. That I would just give this up and then and go uh, be long and yep, play, play yep. numbers because your team is five v three right now. And just all you have to do is just make sure you play numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Fucking awesome, heaven, heaven, top. I mean, I think. Let's I think I should have. I mean, there's. I probably wouldn't have done this in the first place, but. Fucking off Without without a teammate, but I think I should have checked the heaven first because that's more common, especially with an op. Yeah. I mean, it's like technical. It's small difference, but honestly. I don't think you necessarily knew that they had an op, right? Cause like, cause like, the I, I did, I did, I did. I, I saw the scoreboard, I guess they 
I think I either knew or I guessed that they're gonna op. I was I remember specifically thinking I'm gonna counter op here. Okay. Yeah, because they all have oh, tons yeah, of money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I'm I know I'm about to take a op <laughs> battle, I just like I'm not really taking it smartly at all. Without yeah, yeah. yeah. In that case, uh, yeah, probably safely to play with Yusova, and then... A dart would have been really nice to see where she was. Yep, dart drone. <sighs> yep. No big deal, get res, huge. I don't know. Yeah, interesting satchel. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm up here. I'm, hold I'm gonna hold snow. One snow. I'm holding it a bit uh, too tighter. Mid, too mid. Oh, kitchen has so, let's go back to here. That, uh, okay, let's roll this out. Yeah. Okay, so we're at B, and our Sage is also green of us. So we have a Viper at yellow, a Silver at yellow, and a Jet. Who is somewhere B slash mid? Mm -hmm. like. Okay. And then we have an op, and we're thinking we're gonna watch Snowman. But we shouldn't uh, commit too hard. So, what I would do is that I would, well, not Sage, Sage still stays here, that I would probably play here and hold like a really tight angle on this. So that if they swing past it, then they swing mm. past your line of sight here. Like your line of sight is like this, pretty much. Okay. Compared to here, where like they could peek you tightly, they could also swing you. And another thing I'm worried about is that your teammates may not realize. They're gonna swing left, yeah. Right, they might accidentally swing peek left, and then they'll take like an isolated bomb one, and you're too far to help them. What about kitchen though? What about kitchen? Shouldn't I be worried about kitchen if I if I'm holding at the place you're describing? Let your jet worry about it. Your jet's okay. gonna make this contact. Okay, okay. I guess I I let my jet know to yeah. hold my kitchen and then just well, hold that angle. Well, yeah. she's automatically gonna make this contact. I mean, unless for a reason they push from kitchen and they ignore the jet. I mean, I guess that's a possibility. Or they push from from mid and they ignore your jet. I guess that's a possibility. It's just unlikely. So not necessarily that you have to come, hey jet, hold my kitchen, but just be cautious that while the jet is here and alive, that she's most likely going to make first contact for you and mm -hmm. inadvertently going to um, like hold it for you, basically. But as long mm -hmm. as she's alive, if, as soon as she, she dies, then okay, then you got to realize I got to think about kitchen or I got to reposition, etc. Mm -hmm. And with, with Viper so what too, like wouldn't they still be able to swing out or, or get peek from from snow if i'm holding it here yeah. oh i guess i guess maybe but maybe not because it's depends i guess yeah that is true so i might even consider like not even playing here but going all the way maybe. i mean left of yellow is probably the strongest yeah. for op like anyway right yeah to, to like yeah. guarantee that i'm gonna make first contact because generally you want the, the op to like be as many as many engagements as possible so that mm -hmm. there's no mistakes but like the viper was so it peaks too early Etc. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. So, let's see. Oh, I'm gonna hold snow. One snow. Two Another thing too is that if you were to hold snow, I mean, another thing to consider is is, is getting on top of the, the container here in front of you, so you have a, a mm -hmm. slight off angle. Right, 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 right. Because you only need a body shot, but they would need like multiple body shots or a headshot. So whatever you can do mm -hmm. to like throw off their their cross heal placements would helps a lot. Nading snow. A shot. Huge. Yeah. That's not that calm. I know. I'm kidding. Hey, hey. You pick your viper, you pick your viper, you pick nothing, you pick nothing. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's, he's gone. He's so aware. One tap me. He looked behind me, man. I I shot one of them. That's the train. Good shot. Good shot. 
Nick says you want to play fast. Palms your records. Goodbye, Jake Paul. Ugh, my bad. Dude, that rain on you said your problem is your viper is too short? Your viper is too slow to follow up. Too slow? Okay. So like, as soon as the sage dies, you trade up. Good. Perfect timing. And then as soon and as then you I kill... And then I can wait a little bit, yeah. Yeah. As soon as you kill the Reyna, then yeah, you do kind of want to play fast. Because like, as soon as your your position is, is compromised, like now they know that your Wrath is. Because you killed the Reyna, and they, she saw you in the mid-up, etc. Therefore, the whole enemy team knows that you're in Wrath is, that you want to play fast right after that. The problem is that the, your Viper is too far away to do anything. So, if you're gonna make this play, just be really careful that you're basically by yourself. And then where was the Viper? Viper's... Screens? Screens. Yeah, she screens. I might even consider, instead of peeking left, I mean, it makes sense you want to peek uh, left because Probably ice... double peek with, with Viper, like yeah. in a tower formation, yeah. and make sure to clear maze together. Yeah. Play maze together. Or hold her left while she clears maze, something like that. Not even, because left is iced out right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, true. It has the slowdown. And... I'm worried about this default guy, like, swinging too, like... Yeah, probably just have to back Yeah. Oh, we don't need to walk. I don't think you can hear this far. I'm so scared. Of what? What are you scared of? Of, of just everything, just the rain. Now, like, I don't know. Well, you, you, have to, you have to like take calculated risks, so to speak. Like, because sometimes yeah. there is no risk, and sometimes there is a risk. And you have to like figure out like what is the possibility. Like yes, there is a possibility that someone oh. that uh, while you're doing this thing that someone could be inside too, and that if you decide to start running away instead of walking, that 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 person who's inside too would hear you. But just think mm -hmm. about like what's the possibility of that, right? Like possibility yeah. is like, extremely yeah. low. Yeah, yeah. True. Two mid, two watching mid. Wait, how do you know there's two mid? You only saw one person. Um, I don't know. Maybe I like somehow knew, or I don't think. I think I just gave the wrong call. I would just give up mid here. I would go B. I'm holding mid way back just in case they push. I would definitely go B at this point. Mm. Right, I rotate it out. From mid, I think. Because your Viper and your Soul are like the. Your Viper has already walled B, has like basically committed with her wall, and the Soul is not joining. You spot the Vayna, the Snowman, and your Viper and Soul are like, they're ready to, to execute the site like anytime right now. Mm -hmm. So I would just and like, then, yeah, I would just give yeah. it a leg and then go B. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or if you want to take another risk, is that I would look for opportunity to push mid toward B. Mm hmm. With that kill. Okay. But hopefully you should come yeah. to your team because like your, your sage is alone on A, like on A nest with bomb. And, like if she dies, this one's gonna be mid. over. Yeah. Meanwhile, they know your, it's an A fake. Your viper with has crossed into yellow. Yeah. Okay. So, so she's so committed. Take this fight mid. Yeah. Yeah. And she's also in a really good position too. Jet here. You can't say stay jet here. Stay jet mid. Ninety-eight. Two mid. Two mid. One was on the two. Like this one could be easily one if you just you, you and your teammates realize that oh two of my teammates have so much map control that be like so much control that B is that we can probably take B very easily. Mm -hmm. Right? Like the only person who, who was at B is the yeah. who's at Snowman, and the Viper will just cut up cut that off. Now the only angle you have to really worry about, I mean besides maybe the Vayner could spike the smoke, is someone like playing close um, like right around the corner from the bomb bomb plant. Mm -hmm. But besides that, like it should be a, a very easy B execute, and it becomes easy and easier as like this vector now crossed onto yellow. Now you have like more more angles that your your team can has access to. That um, 
yeah like you guys can like have one person plant two people put, pick from green white boys peeking from yellow like it's basically on lockdown already mm. chat here and then we commit to this 1v1 we really shouldn't do that 98 two mid two mid one was on and now sage dies and then runs over and now Viper who was in like a perfect position now she's like forced to take a with Arena. Yeah. Okay. Any questions so far? Um, nothing. I just you know just a really poorly played game. Um, I think also overall just me not playing my role, which is to to take space. The so the only I think ways I've I've been really successfully been doing that was through my lurks and instead of like utilizing my strengths as a duelist. Yeah. Um, on attack side anyway. And no, I think on defense, I just thinking about the choice of weapons um, was, was a big thing on defense and like trading spaces when they're giving up space, um, like that one round that we really hyper analyze where I could have held from garage. Um, so yep. yeah, um, yep. yeah, a lot to work on in the meantime. So thank you. Not no problem. Yeah, so it seems like you have. Uh... The right idea most of the time, well, at least after the fa after you played the the match, that you had the right idea, or have the general idea of what your mistakes are. So that's pretty good. Um, the only thing I would probably just add is, is just two things. One is that um, minor minor issue is that when you decide to look, you should like think of a look as like uh, a risk versus reward decision, right? And looks mm -hmm. are generally geared toward the, the riskier side of decisions that you could make. Mm -hmm. With the safest option being just like stick your team, five stack, whatever. Mm -hmm. So if the enemy team is like on an eco round, for example, right? Now the risk of your look goes way up significantly because if if you were to fail your look, like you die in your look, then not only does like not only are you dead, but like you give up your gun to the enemy, right? And mm -hmm. if they're on an eco round, like that's that's exactly what they want. They want free guns given to them. Mm -hmm. So when your team in, in like in general, when your team has an advantage, whether that's a gun advantage, numbers advantage, position advantage, whatever, that you typically want to play safer, or you should typically play safer. Right, right, right. So think twice about looking when you have like an economy advantage or a gun advantage. Mm -hmm. And think like, is this risk this risk worth taking? Etc. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, the only other thing I want to add too is that for, for many of the rounds that we talked about it a little bit, but um, like utility usage, that many rounds like you just blow all utility and then it gets like zero value. You need this, you satchel this, you satchel to, to jump somewhere, and then you drop down immediately, and then you boom bot somewhere, and it doesn't do anything. Like many mm -hmm. many rounds, but utility just goes like down the drain. Mm -hmm. And I think that also just has a lot to do with my positioning and not being able to read my teammates are doing. Yeah. Uh, it's like those are like symptoms that my utility is not getting value with the kind of the root causes i'm way behind my teammate as race a lot yeah um the, the satchel I, I can't really justify um except to just practice and to, to know and to use them yeah so um, i would say two things one is that question every time that you use utility like have a plan of why are you using this utility? Like, I'm using this because I need to get out of the sticky situation, so I'm gonna satchel mm. up. Or I'm gonna mm. boom bot this because I'm gonna push for my boom bot, or I'm gonna use my boom bot to get information, etc. And then based mm. on the information, I'm gonna decide to look, or I'm gonna decide to push, or whatever. Okay. But have some sort of plan with that utility. The second thing is that okay. um, after the match is over, or after the round is over, whatever, you go back and then you reanalyze your utility and you think that oh i satchel here because i wanted to escape but ask yourself did i really need to satchel or could i save my satchel mm -hmm. and then maybe so, time that uh yeah, go ahead yeah sorry so you you mean after the round like as in during the game you'd kind of go back and think about it yeah okay so step one is like having a plan having a reason for using your utility and then okay mm -hmm. then you just execute upon that and then the second part is going back and then reanalyzing, asking yourself, like, what, given my plan that I wanted to escape, ask yourself if, if the utility was, was necessary. 
So you have yeah. a plan that, oh, I need to escape this sticky situation. But then you realize that, oh, this this person that this threat I thought was a threat, he actually like rotated or he actually died. I could have just saved my satchel. If I just for I don't know, maybe I pay attention to the minimap or maybe if I heard the footsteps correctly and he because he was running away, or whatever the mm. whatever the reason may be. Makes sense. So that if you combine those two things together, that now you your utility becomes more like each utility has has a, has a plan has a purpose and you spend your utility more efficiently like you only spend it when it's really needed and that's the point that, that you sense. that you want to get to where like you you spend your utility it, it always gets value and it always accomplishes something mm-hmm Got it, got it. Okay, any more questions? No, that's it. Um, thank you for spending your time with me. Yeah, no problem. If you want more reviews in the future, just let me know. I think overall you didn't do too bad. I think it's mostly just like a lot of engagements that you took or forced, maybe because you were tilted or something, but you probably don't need to take that many engagements. Just try to like stick your team more. Is there, uh, I guess that might be one thing that I had in mind that I'm, I just couldn't really manage, especially this match, was um, my, my mind. So, you know, if I was wondering if you had any, like, resources to, to share or, or any thoughts on you know, how to stay level-headed because I'm, I'm being passive when I shouldn't be passive and I'm taking risks when I shouldn't take risks and that's not a result of calculated like system to thinking mm. i'm very much playing um i don't i don't know what the 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 word what it is but it's just <clears throat> the, i'm playing according to what i'm feeling um so th that would be like a big question that i have in mind so you're talking more like like pma like uh, your attitude or like how to control your mental or how how to control my mental when yeah. it's kind of going off the rails because generally I think my my attitude is is positive and I'm I'm very much there but what I noticed that one match was that for me I'm good ninety nine percent of the time but once I do start breaking down and tilting then I don't know how to stop it at, at all. I'd say that in between rounds and or like while you're dead try to like. Mm reflect on what you did the previous round and mm -hmm. if like you like try to catch yourself mid tilt basically if you mm -hmm. realize that you made a bad peak or you made a bad bad decision because of x y and z then you try to correct it right away okay or so if you, thinking yeah. more thinking and more reflect reflection yeah. during match and after match okay well if you realize that you're extremely tilted then like you just take a break after the, the match is over okay Alrighty. Okay. Well, thank you again, Mingo. Yep, no problem. I'll hopefully come to you next time with some, some improvements <laughs> and right. new problems. Alright, sounds good. Alright, right, man. Thanks for your time. Bye.